Right, hello everyone. Today, um, I'm going to be reading some character reports from Cage One. Why? I don't know. Just, uh, uh, why not? You know, I don't know, I just felt like it. Let's just read some things. This might be a bit of a niche thing that nobody cares for, but, uh, I don't know, I just kind of like reading things, and I felt like... I did the Ansem reports, but poorly translated, so I figured... Yeah, I could do the normal Ansem reports, maybe I will. But I think a lot of people have done that already, from what I've seen. Uh, and whether that's ASMR or anything like that, I don't know. I'm not an ASMR person, so I'm just actually reading them as they are. But uh, hey, let's uh, let's just read some character reports, huh? Also, I may make a few jokes or just add a bit of commentary here and there. I don't know if that's exactly what people want, but I just figured I'd put a bit more personality into this so it's not just me reading lines. Oh, and just to be clear, this is the journal entry for each character at the end of the game, so it's the finished version of the character entry. Sora, the one who fights the Heartless. Upon reclaiming the Keyblade from his rival Riku, Sora sacrificed his heart to free Kairi and became a Heartless. Kairi's deep feelings for Sora restored him. Now he must confront Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness. Riku. When Kairi lost her heart, Riku allied himself with Maleficent to save her. Riku is actually the rightful master of the Keyblade, but once he chose darkness over light, the weapon chose Sora instead. Ansem exploited Riku's weakness of heart and possessed him. You know, weakness of heart is actually kind of hard to say. I keep wanting to say weakness of the heart. Kairi. Kairi, Sora and Riku always hung out together. When the island vanished, Kairi lost her heart. It turned out that it was hidden within Sora's. As one of the princesses with the power to unlock the secret keyhole, Kairi restored Sora's heart when he was turned into a heartless. Mickey Mouse. King of Disney Castle, he set out to learn more about the darkness and left instructions for Donald and Goofy to find and follow the key bearer. No one knows where King Mickey is now, but they are determined to find him. He made his debut in Steamboat Willie, open bracket, 1928, close bracket. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that every time. But it is also funny how Mickey doesn't have a picture because of course you only see him at the end of the game and you can't save after the end of the game. So this is probably the game with the least amount of Mickey showing up. Donald Duck, Royal Magician. Skilled in magic, but short-tempered and stubborn. Because Mickey said to follow the key bearer, he once left Sora to follow Riku. But friendship soon led him back to Sora. Donald made his screen debut in The Wise Little Hen, 1934. Short-tempered and stubborn is, uh, <laughs> well, that could describe me if I had a journal entry. Goofy, Captain of the Royal Knights. He avoids fighting whenever possible. Mickey's most loyal subject. Because Mickey said to follow the key bearer, he once left Sora to follow Riku, but friendship soon led him back to Sora. Goofy made his first screen appearance in Mickey's Review, 1932. What the fuck is a review? Minnie Mouse, Queen of Disney Castle, ruling in Mickey's absence. I, Jiminy Cricket, I'm accompanying Donald and Goofy as the royal chronicler at her request. Queen Minnie is more concerned than anyone about the king's disappearance. Minnie made her screen debut in Steamboat Willie 1928. Now clearly I'm not Jiminy Cricket, but I can't really do his voice, so we'll just have to go with a British accented version. Let's just say James Cricket. Oh yeah, and you can't turn Minnie's picture in the journal because uh, she's got fake ears, which is kind of funny. Daisy Duck, Donald's sweetheart. She's helping Minnie while the others look for King Mickey. She has Donald under her thumb and does a good job of keeping him in line. She originally appeared as Daisy in Mr. Duck Steps Out, 1940. I suppose if good job means domestic violence, then yeah, sure. Pluto, Mickey's faithful dog. Pluto is more than a pet. He and Mickey are bound by strong ties of loyalty. Pluto set out with the others to find his master. Will that famous nose of his lead him to Mickey? Pluto originally appeared in The Chain Gang, 1930. Chip, one of the kingdom's specialists, helps maintain the gummy ship, which can travel to any destination. Chip is more serious and diligent than his easygoing, playful partner, Dale. Chip and Dale's first appearance was in Private Pluto, 1943. Oh, there's a lot of Disney, old Disney cartoon short things that I just have no idea existed <laughs> until I read this. Dale, one of the kingdom's specialists, helps maintain the gummy ship which can travel to any destination. Compared to the more serious Chip, he takes a happy-go-lucky approach to life. Chip and Dale's first appearance was in Private Pluto in 19... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we've seen that already. Huey, one of Donald's three nephews, Huey is the leader, and he keeps playful Dewey and laid-back Louie in line. You can spot Huey by his trademark red cap. Huey began tormenting his uncle Donald in Donald's Nephews, 1938. Dewey, one of Donald's three nephews, always wears a blue cap. 
cheerful and easygoing, he works with his brothers in a shop in Traverse Town. Dewey began tormenting his uncle Donald in Donald's Nephews, 1938. Can't wait to read that one for a third time. Louis, one of Donald's three nephews, works with his brothers in a shop in Traverse Town. Gentle and carefree, but notices a lot of things others miss. To find him, look for a green cap. Louis began tormenting his uncle Donald in Donald's Nephews, 1938. Merlin, medieval. Dates on- wait, sorry, that's Harry Potter. Merlin, a great sorcerer living on the outskirts of Traverse Town. Merlin's wisdom and magic powers rank second to none, and he teaches Sora and his friends about magic. He has a mysterious bag that can hold anything, no matter how large. Merlin first tutored Arthur in how to be a king in The Sword in the Stone, 1963. Fairy Godmother, a powerful but generous and good-hearted fairy who helps Sora and his friends. Slightly absent-minded, but an expert in magic. She gives Sora and the others lessons in magic, as well as advice on their journey. She first appeared as Cinderella's fairy godmother in... Cinderella, 1950. Yeah, she sure is powerful, as anyone who's played Cage 3 Remind and Melody of Memory will know. Uh, very, very useful in a tight plot situation. Pongo, a brave and intelligent Dalmatian. With his mate Perdita, he looks after 99 Dalmatian puppies. Quick-witted, Pongo is an expert at escaping from tight spots. Pongo was first spotted on screen. <laughs> spotted. Spotted on screen. Uh, in 101 Dalmatians, 1961. Perdita, a beautiful Dalmatian. With her partner Pongo, she takes care of 99 Dalmatian puppies. Perdita will brave any danger to protect her spotted charges. Perdita was first spotted on screen in 101 Dalmatians, 1961. 99 puppies. Pongo and Perdita's puppies, when they work together, they can be tough to beat. Yeah, they can kill Corella's mother. Ever since their world was destroyed by the darkness, they've been trying to get back together again. They were first spotted on screen in 101 Dalmatians, 1961. Yeah, they're very clever, these dogs. They know if they just hide in the chest, then Sora can't help but open the chest and uh, they'll be sent back. So I guess that's their method for getting back together again. Brooms. Enchanted brooms with a life of their own. They tidy up, maintain the gummy ship, do house repairs, wait on others, just about anything useful. They swept onto the screen in Fantasia, 1940. These brooms are basically slaves, right? Yeah, this is a, this is a, yeah. Leon, a swordsman who wields the gunblade. His real name? Scroll Leonhart. He escaped to Traverse Town when the Heartless raided his homeworld. To part with his old self, a man who had been helpless to stop them, he changed his name. Since meeting the king who has been so vigilant against the Heartless, Leon has sought the truth behind the key. Final Fantasy VIII Yuffie, a female ninja who escaped to Traverse Town when her homeworld was taken by the Heartless. She stays strong and cheerful in any situation. She works with Leon and Eris to unravel the secrets of the key. Final Fantasy VII Eris, she lost her home to the Heartless at a very young age. Beneath her gentle disposition lies a strong will and a firm sense of duty. Many are naturally drawn to her. Aerith works with Leon and Yuffie to learn more about the Heartless and this key. Final Fantasy VII. It's funny that many are naturally drawn to her, you just have to check Twitter to find that out. Cloud, a fighter hired by Hades to compete in the Colosseum. Despite his association with Hades, his heart remains untouched by the Heartless. Cloud keeps very much to himself, which makes him something of an enigma. What is he seeking? Final Fantasy VII. Sephiroth. Once known as the greatest of swordsmen, his whereabouts have been unknown for some time. He challenged Sora to a one-on-one -on -one duel. No one knows why he suddenly returned. Apparently he and Cloud have crossed paths before. Final Fantasy VII. Man, Leon really sticks out like a sore thumb in this game. He's like, hey, Final Fantasy VIII, anyone? No? Sid, owner of an accessory shop in Traverse Town. A highly skilled engineer and a first-rate pilot. When the Heartless invaded his world, he escaped to Traverse Town on a gummy ship he built himself. He is an expert on gummy ships. From the hit MMO Final Fantasy XIV with a free trial all the way up to level 60, and including the award-winning Heavensward expansion. Uh, no, actually, no, he's from Final Fantasy VII too. Tidus, a cheerful, self-confident boy who lived on a Destiny Islands. He considers himself a champ at everything. Nobody knows what happened to him after his island disappeared. Final Fantasy X. I guess forgotten about, that's what happens to him. <laughs> I can't all be like Selfie and appear in Cage 2. I guess he's in Chain of Memories and coded. Oh, wow. Selfie. A spunky girl who lived on the Destiny Islands. Don't laugh, it's not funny. She's rather impulsive and quite the romanticist. 
Nobody knows what happened to her after her island disappeared. Final Fantasy VIII. There we go, there's someone from VIII again, nice. Waka, a boy who lived on the Destiny Islands. He looks out for Tidus and Selfie like a big brother. Nobody knows what happened to him after his island disappeared. Final Fantasy X. Moogles, escaped to Traverse Town when the Heartless invaded their home. They know how to combine various items to form new ones. Many Final Fantasies. <laughs> how can it be many if, this, if it's the final ha 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 Snow White, a beautiful princess, gentle and pure as snow. She is one of the princesses needed to open the final keyhole and was captured by the Heartless. Her world has already been swallowed by the darkness. The fair-skinned princess first appeared in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937. Cinderella, a hard-working young girl who's often bullied by her stepmother and stepsisters. She is one of the princesses needed to open the final keyhole and was captured by the Heartless. Her world has already been destroyed. Prince Charming first swept her away in Cinderella, 1950. Hey, why are you making it about him, huh? Aurora. <sighs> that one sucks to say when you've got a lazy arse. Anyway, a young woman with a lovely voice. She is loved by three good fairies and cursed by Maleficent. The sorceress captured Aurora to help open the final keyhole. She had her first encounter with Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty, 1959. Hey, why are you going to make it about Maleficent, huh? Belle, a brave and intelligent young woman who understands the beast's true nature. She is one of the seven princesses needed to open the final keyhole. She and the beast have lost their world to the darkness. She appeared at the beast's castle for the first time in Beauty and the Beast, 1991. Beast. A prince who has changed into a hideous beast because of his selfish heart. Bale has helped heal the loneliness he suffered due to his ugliness. To save Bale, he made his way to Hollow Bastion alone. He was first enchanted by Bale in Beauty and the Beast, 1991. Um, actually, I think you'll find he was enchanted by the Enchantress who came and disguised herself, but uh, whatever. Maleficent, a sorceress of awesome power. She tried to use the Heartless for her own evil ends but the Heartless were actually using her. She turned into a huge dragon when cornered by Sora and his friends. She first appeared to curse Aurora in Sleeping Beauty, 1959. Dragon. Yeah, that's just what they're calling it here. Maleficent became a huge dragon when the Keyblade released the darkness in her heart. The dragon wielded both Maleficent's power and the terrible forces of darkness. Maleficent's powerful alter ego first appeared in Sleeping Beauty, 1959. Damn, it's a good thing right at the end. I wouldn't want this video to drag on. <laughs> Ansem. As a researcher and ruler of his world, he studied the Heartless and delved into the many secrets of the world. While studying the Heart and the darkness within it, he was possessed by darkness and ultimately destroyed his own world. He sacrificed his body to attain a great power and later possessed Rikus to regain a physical presence. Failure to stop him means the end of all worlds. Oh yeah, so most of that isn't really accurate anymore to the story, but uh, that's Kingdom Hearts for you. Anyway, it's Ansem. He's very cool. I mean, I just have to say that. I can't see Ansem and not say how cool he is. Unknown. A mysterious figure who appeared in Hollow Bastion. He also can't stand still, so something tells me Zemlis was drunk when he decided to make this visit. Oh, just as a little bonus, I figured why not do a couple of poorly translated ones, you know, just for old time's sake. So I've poorly translated the main original named characters of this game, Sora, Riku, Kairi and Ansem, just to see what that turns out to be like. Something killed in my heart, he said. Riku sacrifices a liver to free the enemy Sora Kairi. There is no heart. Kairi's deep feelings about the problem changed her life. Now you need... He faced Ansem, who looked grim. When Cairo loses his heart, Riku joins Maleficent to save him. He has. Riku is actually a master of croquet, but sometimes, since darkness dominates the light, Sora chooses the weapon. Nasira used Riku's weak heart and understand. Kairi, Sora, and Riku live together. As for their island, lost. Lost Kairi heart. He was found inside sister. Excuse me? Like one of the princesses, a mystery can be revealed. Keychain wakes Kairi up and turns Soraya's heart. The heart. Read the spirit as a scientist and as your world ruler. Them is immersed in the mysteries of the world. When studying the heart, I was finally in the dark. Destroy your world, he gave to strengthen his body. Finally, he grabs Rika's body, excuse me, so that he can be seen again. Error. This station is the end of the world. 
Alright, and that's everyone in the Characters 1 section. There is of course the second set of characters, which are Disney World specific characters, but I'll do that in another video perhaps. Thanks for watching this very, very random affair. I actually do quite enjoy just reading things like this and making observations. It's nice because it's kind of like the Heartless videos I did, but I don't really need to say any full on opinions, I'm not comparing colours, and I probably get less dumb comments. So yeah, it's pretty fun. And if you'd like to see more readings of things, well, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to read. Hey, maybe I could read some stuff. Uh, obviously there's Kingdom Hearts, but there's some other things in other games that I wouldn't mind reading. Stuff like the Arkham stories from Batman, or the Near Weapon stories, or more Kingdom Hearts things, of course, like secret reports. Eh, just things like that, you know. I kind of like looking at the deeper text in games, and uh, I just thought, you know, it'd be kind of nice just to read some stuff. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. Hey, it's my brain. It's a little bit weird. I don't know how it works, but uh, I'm just going to roll with it. So thanks, everybody, for watching, listening. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Belle, a brave and intelligent young woman. A brave and intelligent young woman who understands the beast's true... <laughs> Belle, a brave and intelligent young woman... Belle, a brave and intelligent young woman who understands the beast... The priests, the fucking priests. Yeah, okay, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, let's go.